everybody, it's EK from EK Gorman Designs and I am coming in today with this image from Oddball Art Studios. It's image 46, Lara the Lurker and Teddy and I thought I'd do a little no-line coloring on this digital image. The best way to get no-line coloring from a digital image is to print it out in grayscale. So when I'm loading it up to print it out, I in fact choose an option that allows my dark lines to go into this pale grayscale line. For an image such as this where um, there are things like zombie hash marks, I start with my darkest color and then I move into the lightest and shade it the way I would normally. But I like to drop in the really, really dark images first so A, they blend out and B, I can see them. Because there comes a point sometimes in this grayscale you lose lines completely, especially detail lines within the image. So if you mark them early, you don't lose them. Uh, and I'm just basically doing some basic shading. I don't normally make my zombies green, but I have a bunch of new Copic markers. New to me, not new to the industry. But I thought maybe I'd play with my new ones today, and one of my new ones is this YG93. I've been working with the 91, the 95, and the 97 for so long that it didn't occur to me that there was one between the lightest and the mid-tone and now I own it and it's wonderful and I don't have to work so hard to blend out the 95 when I use it and if you're not familiar with that YG95 it's a really saturated green. I need to apologize I have a new cutting mat. Um, I did not get the tonic mat I just got a like basic cutting mat and it's crooked. Actually, the mat's not crooked, my camera's crooked, but I didn't realize until I was sitting here editing a film that my cutting mat was crooked and my camera. So yeah, I'm sorry. It's driving me absolutely insane, so I can only imagine what it's feeling like to you. So this is my deepest of heartfelt apology about my crooked lines on my screen. I will try to do better. I'm continuing with this effort of putting in my darkest lines and then adding my lightest color and then blending out with shadows. Um, you'll see how those really dark marks I put in blend out and don't seem so stark after the fact. And then I decided to go with blues and purples because I didn't want her to be too girly, but I wanted some, I don't know. I try to use consistent coloring, like if I put blue, if I put a blue somewhere in it, I put a blue in multiple places, so like her shoes and her shorts are going to get the blue treatment. I added the purple to her shirt, and then I added it to the patch on her pants. I added a faint red to the heart on her shorts, and then touched that red into her lips. So if I'm going to put color in one place, I make a point to put color in multiple places. The only exception here is the only place that there's green is on her skin, and the only place that there's that pale brown is on the teddy bear and that was intentional so that way her skin and the bear would be what stands out not her shorts or her shoes um, even the oh see here I'm coming with the purple I will tell you this B23 and B25 are two of my new markers and I'm loving them because they're so gray they're such a gray violet that when I'm looking for something muted I'm loving I'm, I'm just loving it. I'm absolutely adoring it. And I think this BB08 is the perfect dark tone for those two markers. Um, yes, I've been playing with my markers. It's fun. And I've been doing some no-line coloring with my markers, which is even more fun. I get a real kick out of no-line coloring because, as you can see, like with the purple here, I did the bottom of her shirt. Now I'm coming back in and doing the sleeve. If I had done the shirt and the sleeve simultaneously, I run the risk of losing my lines. So I'll actually break it up into really small portions and then go back. Um, in the same way that I'm saying I used colors in two places, so I'm adding some grays to the mouse, I use the same gray colors in her hair. Again, because I don't want the mouth to be the focal point of it. He's cute, he's a nice little addition to it, but the teddy bear and Lara herself is the key. I'm taking in a really, really dark, warm gray and adding all the details of her hair that the artist has done, that Lizzie Love has done in the artwork. And then I'll fade it all out and blend it all out so that way it doesn't feel like those art lines were ever there and in fact the no-line coloring becomes effective. So I don't usually use two markers right next to each other in the gray families, but this is the exception. 
I used the W7 and then put my darkest shade down with the W6 followed immediately by the W5 because I didn't want any stark like areas. I wanted it all to really, really blend nicely. I won't lie, hair is not my thing. I am not the strongest hair colorer. If you need to go learn how to color hair, I am not the person to do it. And at the moment, her hair looks terrible, but when I add the background in, her hair works. Um, that gray hair that I did on the white paper, not effective at all. But I always knew what I was going to in the end for the background. And because of that, I knew or at least I hoped that the gray would work. I'm putting in a ground and I'm just keeping it simple. Just some simple cool grays to make the ground and shadowing. Um, you'll see why I kept the ground so simple here in a minute because the background, the sky is, it's not hard, but it's not simple. And keeping the ground just a cool gray was the most effective thing I could do in the long run for the whole scene. I will tell you, when you do a really dark, full-colored background like I'm about to do, there takes a jump of faith. Like, you have to have faith that what you're thinking will work. You also have to be willing to work through the ugly phase. When you go dark for a background like I'm about to do, there is a huge, huge, ugly phase that you have to get through. Um, I realized I was losing her eyes and they were completely disappearing, so I pulled out the... Copic and really highlighted her eyes and suddenly she, her whole face pops. Using just a simple dye, I traced a circle to make the moon and instead of going with a blue moon, I went with an eerie yellow moon because I thought it would really help punch the color up in her skin tone and I think it did. I think it really made her skin kind of come alive. Um, yeah, if you think a section of your coloring is flat, Figure out what color you can add to your um, card to help punch it up. And in this case, the yellow was it. Now I'm starting the sky. I want a nice haze around the moon. And I thought I wanted a haze around her. I was wrong. I did not. But a haze around the moon, so I dropped in my lightest tone. And I'm using kind of a weird collection for night sky, but I wanted the sky to look almost like a horror movie sky. So I'm not going with a classic blue or gray sky like I normally would. I am actually pulled out my BGs. Oh, yes. See, and here's where I realized I was going to leak through my cardstock. So I pulled out just a scrap of cardstock, and it's just brown paper, to put under so I wouldn't leak onto my new mat. Because the goal here is to have a clean mat that doesn't have paint splotches all over it to film on. I can't promise that's not that's going to happen. But clean black mat to film on instead of the random pieces of white paper I've been using up until now. So my background is being done with blue greens and I pulled out the blue green 70 series. So I've got the 78, the 75, and the 72 and then the 70 which is really washed out. But I wanted this really nice kind of eerie green sky and the B99 that I used for my darkest areas of the sky really blended nicely into these blue greens. And you're about to, we're about to embark on the ugly face. Every time you go through a fully colored background like this and you're really saturating your background, there's an ugly face. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to get through it. It's it's just part of the process. And you're just going to have to accept that there's going to be an ugly face and you're going to have to work your way through it. And we're not quite there yet, but we're about to be because here it comes. Places where there's streaks and there's unevenness and it just hasn't blended right and you just can't be afraid to put more color down onto the cardstock and get it to blend through. Um, and in fact, the modeling that you get sometimes with your Copic markers when you're, you, you've used them too much and you blend them out too much works amazingly in a background like this. I tried to do the touch technique. The B70 is just too light. It doesn't blend right. And I tried to do the touch, touch technique and I realized I was going to be there all day. So instead, I decided to really saturate the paper with the BG70 and then go over it with the BG72 and then blend it out again. And I finally was starting to get that halo around the sky that I actually wanted. Now, I've put so much color down, I've lost a lot of my darkness. So I'm going back in and working back in some of the darkness. 
And like I said, here's where the ugly face, you just have got to keep working it. And suddenly, if you're persistent enough, you get there. Now, I'm still slightly uneven in the background. There's still some streakiness and lineness, and there's always going to be. So I pulled out my colorless blender and added a little more haze around the moon. And then pulling back out that BG, or no, that B99, I started putting trees in the background. Something to take your eye, eye away from the fact that there's streakiness. And I basically put in some dead trees. I mean, really ugly dead trees. They're horrible. But it works because, yeah, they're awful. If you really look at them, you'll see that they're, they're really terrible. And I added some shrubbery around the bush or some haziness. And then cleaned the trees up a little bit with a C9. Um, and they blend into the background and they make that sky seem less weird. I added a sentiment from this Tim Holtz sticker pack. And I think it's perfect. Darling, you are a work of art. Because even though she's a zombie, she's quite pretty. And there we go. There's my finished no-line coloring card. Ignore how bad the trees are because they're just awful. If you like what you're seeing, click the dragon that will subscribe you to my channel. If you want to see more of what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up so I know that you like what you see. Thanks for stopping by today, and I hope you got some tips and tricks on no-line coloring. Till next time, happy crafting.